I'm here again with James, and uh, we've been talking about hash tables. And last time we ended with saying that we're going to come back with a visualization on a whiteboard, but unfortunately our dry erase marker is dead. So hopefully we'll have visualizations in future videos, but we're going to continue talking about hash tables. And we're going to start off with my uh, question on where we are, knowing very little about hash tables. I kind of get the concept of not really how they work. And my initial thought, at, while listening to you in the last video, um, and as an example you gave off camera, was that let's say you had all these houses and you want to put people in each house. And John Smith came along, and you're going to put John Smith in house number five. Um, my initial thought is, okay, well then you have all these values, all these people in these houses, and then you have a separate list of what house they are in. Uh, but I know that's not right, and you don't have a list, you figure out where they are mathematically based on the name's value. Yeah. Explain that some more. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, um, so let's talk about, let's, let's try to use an example that is probably uh, an easier example to work with, okay? Okay. Um, and we'll talk in kind of in terms of like C programming and, and try to use those sorts of words this time. And, and we'll talk about just what we would do, like let's suppose we have a, a dictionary, and, or not a dictionary, let's suppose we have a big book. And we want to identify all the, the words in the book and, and sort of uh, keep track of how many times each word is counted. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what we might do is we start inputting, inputting these words and we first we, we try to make them all uniform. So we, uh, we get rid of any case sensitivity. We make them all lowercase. And then what we want to do is we want to actually start organizing it in our data structure. Okay. Okay? So uh, what we want to do is we want to come up with a way that, uh, you know, obviously words are just letters, combinations of letters, or arrays of letters, right? Each one has a number. And those numbers are, are you can't just add them up because, uh, you know, uh, if, if it was one and two, or yeah. three and, and yeah. if it was two yeah. and three, it'd be five, it'd be four and one and right. five. Right, right. So, so you know, you, you would have uh, uh, non-unique numbers for each mm -hmm. word. So that's why we use something like a uh, uh, MD5 hash, right? right? Which, uh, we discussed earlier, not on camera, but the um, which theoretically can be unique. But if thing, if it, right. what the values you're putting into it get large enough, eventually the numbers start right, right, again. Yeah, but it's yeah. supposed to be so, so large gonna, that it's, it's unlikely. Compute, yeah, yeah, it's going to compute for at least all the the words we have available to us. It's right. going to keep them very unique. So um, what we can do is then we can translate that word, that combination of characters, into a number. Okay, but um, we won't we won't consider that even though there is a little bit of uh, overlap on MD. MD5, we don't even have to worry about that because we won't consider that number the key. We'll consider the string the key. Okay. And the value will consider the count of that word. Okay. So what we'll do though is the hash function, what it's going to do is it's going to take that word, okay, and it's going to MD5 it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now it has a number. And we'll have made an array that is our hash table. So for this example, maybe we'll make an array that has like a million spaces in it, right? We we probably don't have a million words available. Maybe that's a little overkill. Maybe we'll only do a hundred thousand. Sure. Because that's probably most most books, uh, you know. And as a good developer, I probably would have looked up how many, what the average number of words used in a, in a volume are, and try to keep that big of a table. Right. So, anyways, MD5 is going to start making numbers for each of these words. Obviously, these numbers are going to be far bigger than my hundred thousand size table mm -hmm. or, or array, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use a modulus, okay, to find the remainder, um, dividing that number with the number the size of my table. Right? Okay. So uh, again, it's going to be very similar to what we were talking about before, where the word and, okay, it's going to give me a number, the remainder off dividing by the size. So you can kind of think of if the number was like seven million eight hundred thirty-two, you can think of every time I get a hundred thousand, it wraps around once, right? And it wraps around again. And finally, it's going to finish wrapping, and then the remainder is going to be how many times it goes through to get to the location. Okay. okay. But now, what happens is two different numbers might have the same remainder. Okay. So we get two numbers on the same location. So that's why the hash function doesn't just figure out where in the array it goes. It actually has to look and see if something's there. And if something's there, it has to see if it's the same key. If it's the same key, it's good. It doesn't have to do anything else. If it's not, well, it kind of depends how you write hash tables, but it either does, like I said last time, it'll check the next one and the next one. Uh, there are some implementations that are slightly different. Uh, I think Microsoft wrote a version where uh, the the cell actually can, can, can itself be divided up. And uh, I think there's other versions where you start, you don't just look at the next one, but you skip 
and you look, uh, you know, around certain areas. Okay, so I was going to ask if there was like sub keys, if it were, but that kind of sounds like what the Microsoft one is doing. Sort of. It's not a sub key as much as what it starts to do. If you're inside that that bin, is it'll start going back to the original, like just check each value one at a time, mm-hmm. like like you would do as a non hash, just a regular array or linked list. Okay. Okay, and then if if that. Um, other than that, there you could do hash tables and hash tables though, and have two keys. Mm-hmm. Uh, it not it doesn't solve the problem we talked about earlier, which which are hash collisions. It does not solve hash collisions, right? For hash okay. collisions, you have to compare your original key and just keep moving. Right. But what it does is, it, uh, what you could do is you could have groups within groups. You know that that would be perfectly acceptable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's comments on this YouTube video right now. Chris looks like he's lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I should. I, we should. We, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to. The. Um, what did you call it? The finding the remainder with the percent yeah. sign. Uh, modulus. The modulus. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not grasping how that's being used properly. Yeah, so... It talks to me like I'm an idiot. Okay, so... <laughs> like you normally talk to me. So my array is only, only uh, you know, we, we were saying, I think 100,000 for a little bit. My sure. array is only 100,000. Can we make it a smaller number just for an example? I know, that's... Funny. Let's say 10. Yeah. <laughs> my, my array is size 10. Okay. So, um, so when my number, my MD5 number gets made, and that number is in thousands, right? Mm-hmm. 1,115. Mm-hmm. I can't put it on that array, right? You, okay, right, right. Sure. Because what I'm going to get is what, what do you, it's like fault, right? Right. You, so even if it's if it's 11, they can't put it on there. That's great. Okay, we should, we should use that. Example, <laughs> yeah. So if it's 11, right, it can't put it on that. As a matter of fact, if it's 10, it can't so put it saying, on there because it's zero through nine, right? Right. So the 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 value is bigger than the number of spaces. Yes. So that's why you're getting the remainder. Yes. Okay. Okay. That'll that'll remap it on what you have available. I got it now. Okay. See, you just use smaller numbers, yeah. and uh, we should have gone to three. <laughs> yeah, no, let's do one, <laughs> and then and then you have two, so you get the remainder. Well, okay. You always get remainder one. So get See, you look at a very simple equation. Yeah. No, okay, I understand it more now. Right. I, got it. Yeah. I got I got why you're doing that. That's what I was missing before. Yeah. yeah. So that will always tell you where to start, and then um, if you're a very good developer, and you're writing a custom sort of hash not table. Me. Okay. Well, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you know, again, people use. Uh, if you use a dictionary, you've used a hash table. You didn't even know it. Right. Right. Because how does that work? You think every time you put in a word and a value associated with that word in the dictionary, do you think it just stores them in some list and checks those one at a time? It doesn't. That's okay. how I would have done it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what it does is it's 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 going to be doing some sort of, uh, and I'm not a developer for Python, so if someone corrects me, they're, they're probably right, but what it's going to be doing, it's going to be mapping that string to a location, mm-hmm. and then it's going to verify that key, and it'll be able to get any values that are there. Right? Now, you're saying, okay, I'm, you're not a really a Python developer. I mean, I don't develop the core interpreter for Python. Right, so, right. Yeah. So, but you're saying that... Uh, you're pretty sure the dictionaries are hash tables, or you're yeah. positive. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, you can see this because. Oh, well, yeah, go ahead. I'm, when you say when you say someone correct me, is that what you were saying, referring to, or something else? Well, I mean, I don't know the fine details of the implementation, okay. but yeah, it's okay. It's, I guess I guess I forget that. My question was going to be: you you do a lot of stuff in C. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I do a lot of Python too. Okay. Yeah. But in C. Um, is there anything like dictionaries, or you have to create it yourself? You can kind of create it yourself. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess there's yeah. probably something out there, but in yeah. general, and there's your C, so most people create stuff. So you know, so. a dictionary is a very specialized type of hash table, right? Because a dictionary is you you have a word that is your key, and you can put whatever you want as a value. Though. You can put an object, you can put another list, you can put another dictionary, mm-hmm. right? Um, but for C, uh, you could you could make something more abstract. You know, for example, we were talking about the facial recognition software earlier, and uh, the way facial recognition software works, right? It's going to actually yeah, it's going to map all these these locations, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's going to take that very complex object, and it's going to uh, hash that into a table, mm-hmm. right? So it's going to compute. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to take that that key, which is all of that data about your face, and it's going to convert it into a number. Okay, and then it's going to, you know, um, find the remainder on the size of that table. Okay, it's going to check that that uh, location in the table, and it's going to then compare uh, uh, your, your 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 all your values to that. Okay, and that actually is a 
that's an oversimplification. It actually works a little bit more complicated than that. Right. That's kind of interesting. Because uh, I think actually the way it works is each distance gets hashed. Mm -hmm. And sort of the combination of all of the locations in the hack table kind of represent your face. But uh, again, you can just take a very complex object, a very complex idea, and, and you, can, you, can, you can create a hash table for it. Uh, which is kind of the power of doing that in C. Sure. Okay. Well, thank you for talking with me about this. And uh, we'll do some more chats soon, some more tech talks. And uh, as always, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Should be a link in the description. And James, thanks again for stopping by. No problem. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.